Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Daniel the Miracle Man Jacob says he is now the most avoided middleweight. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the notification gang, gang, hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, the channel donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Now, shout out to my dude, BK's own. Very great ambassador for the sport of boxing. Not only his boxing skill and what he is as a boxer, but as a man outside of the ring also. And that's Daniel Miracle Man Jacobs. Now, I just read an article with Ring TV. Shout out to them. I have a link to it in the description in case you want to read the, the interview and the write-up. And Jacob said, I absolutely feel I'm being avoided. After my last performance, the other top middleweights now know what I bring to the table. And the fact that I'm verbally calling out these top guys and nobody seems interested that I'm the most avoided guy in the division because a lot of people think I beat Triple G and I'm one of those people. He also went to say, I'm willing to be patient while Gennady Golovkin and Canelo settle their business. I'll keep winning and they'll be forced to fight me because of public demand. Now, I know the boxing game because I've been in it for quite some time. And I know a lot of fighters, trainers, just different things like that. And I also know the fans. Now, I know some people are gonna get angry and say, oh, what do you mean, Jacobs? You're full of shit. He's not. And I'm gonna explain to you why. Before Billy Joe Saunders versus Willie Monroe Jr., which is a solid fight, but who wouldn't rather see Jacobs in another title fight after that Triple G performance. To me, based on breaking Gennady Golovkin's, his knockout streak of, I think, 23 knockouts in a row, I think he's earned that because that's one of the, it's like a Sean Porter, Keith Thurman type of fight where Keith Thurman actually won the fight, but some people did think Sean Porter won, but even if you had Sean Porter losing, and um, respects to the Porter family also because I, I heard they're going through some, and his fight guy, uh, he had to pull out of the fight because of, uh, family reasons but in that Porter Thurman fight you've seen a tenacious Porter who I think he got hurt but he never backed down and he even if he was hurt no matter what he kept bringing the fight to Keith Thurman and it made for a scintillating exciting fight same thing with Jacobs he got knocked down you know what I mean he got caught in transition switching um, stances I believe but the thing about it is it's what he did when he got up. Just like Andre Ward versus Sergey Kovalev, the crusher in the first fight. It's what they did when they got up. And I think he kind of reduced Golovkin to a jab. Golovkin has a great jab, but that's all he was doing. Normally you see, if, if it's a Daniel Gill or somebody, or a Dama, you see Golovkin a lot more aggressive and a lot more um, fluid with his combination punches, right? And I don't care what anyone says. I personally had Jacobs winning. It was a close fight. I was there live in New York. And, you know what I mean? Some people don't know shit about boxing, so they're like, oh, look at Jacobs' face. He was wearing glasses. Again, that doesn't mean anything. What, what someone's face looks like doesn't tell the whole tale. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean anything. Because some fighters like Miguel Cotto, Gabe Rosado, they have a lot of scar tissue. So their face might swell or cut or bust up or bruise or show reddening. It's, it's just different strokes for different folks. And again, you can't judge a fight based on solely on what someone's face looks like. You know what I mean? Because I've seen guys with uh, hematomas and shit that won fights. I've seen guys that got knocked down really badly, came back to win the fight. So, you know what I mean? That stuff doesn't matter if you know boxing. So, Billy Joe Saunders, he fought, he's fighting Willie Monroe. He could have fought Daniel Jacobs. And I've seen the call out, but obviously, Billy Joe probably didn't want that work. I've seen on Twitter, and I don't have, I'm in the hotel room in Omaha getting ready for the Crawford and Dongo weigh-in. So I'm not going to do the research, but you guys can do the research. And I've seen an interaction between David Lemieux and Daniel Jacobs, right, on Twitter. And Jacobs was like, hey, you're a good fighter, let's fight. And Dan David Lemieux says, I have bigger fish to fry. I would love to fight you, but I have bigger fish. What bigger fish is there? Like, you know what I mean? So it's going to be real interesting to see who David Lemieux fights next. Um, Jamal Charlo. He's kind of new to the division, so I don't know where he stands as far as the Daniel Jacobs fight. Canelo, I don't think he wants any parts of, of Daniel Jacobs. I think stylistically that would be a very difficult fight, especially with the height differential and the power of Jacobs, the boxing ability. 
And then Golovkin, his team told you, Abel Sanchez has an interview with, I believe, On The Ropes Boxing Radio Podcast, and he says we're not looking to rematch him for five or six fights. So, I mean, that tells you what he's going to fight or where their head's at, you know what I mean? And I'm no dummy. You could tell by Abel Sanchez's remarks pre- and post-fight, especially post-fight, because that's after the, they've witnessed what happened. And you'll see Abel Sanchez respects Jacobs. Because he's like, yeah, if Golovkin moves up to 168, Jacobs will rule the middleweight division. And I keep hearing him in reference to his upcoming September 16th fight talk about how Canelo is solid, but he's no Jacobs. He's like, man, Jacobs was a big guy. He's, he's a warrior in a bigger frame. So we're not worried about how we looked in that fight going into the Canelo fight because he's a different puzzle. And it, it sounds like Abel Sanchez, which we'll find out September 16th, he believes that Canelo is an easier puzzle than the Jacobs puzzle. So, I mean, I agree with what Daniel Jacobs is saying. Another person, and I could do this all day, this is a freestyle off the top of the head. Like, this is not written down, but I just know what's going on in boxing because I cover it. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. called out Daniel Jacobs on his Twitter, I think probably like three to four times. Jacobs responded, I made a video about it. You guys can research all of this. I made a video about it. And then Chavez Jr. went ghost and went quiet. And I just see him posting a bunch of weird selfies now. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Go to his page. And he, after Jacobs finally, Jacobs didn't respond to the earlier call outs. Like, after, immediately after he lost to Canelo, I think he was calling out Jacobs. And I never really seen a reply. But he kept calling him out posting pictures of uh, pick stitches of his, him facing off with Daniel Jacobs. Somebody just put the two pictures together. And then Jacobs finally responded. He's like, all right, let's make it. Let's happen. I'll come up to you. He offered to come up to 168, even though he's fighting at 160. He said, I'll make it comfortable. This is some easy work. He responded to me and said that. And I made a video about it. And now Chavez Jr., I haven't heard nothing about it. And Chavez Jr., since that time, I've seen him post, hey, Martin Murray, let's fight. What, if, what do you mean, Martin Murray? What about Daniel Jacobs? So it is what it is. I agree with Jacobs. I think he is avoided, especially after the Golovkin. When you've seen this mythical dragon have some issue more so than Kell Brook, because you can't even, you, you could say Kell Brook, but you can't say Kell Brook. And I'm going to explain. Some people say Kell Brook exposed, but he can only expose so much if he end up losing and getting stopped and getting his eye bashed in. You know what I mean? So I agree Kell Brook exposed some vulnerabilities, but ultimately he was still stopped within five rounds. So he didn't expose everything about Golovkin. Otherwise, he would have won the fight. You know what I'm saying? And you go, oh, his eye. I mean, this is what happened. Jacobs went the distance. So that's a little bit different. So I, I agree with Daniel Jacobs here. I think that based on that performance, people see like, oh, okay, this is a... A dude that rehydrates and he looks fresh. He has a big frame. He has power, amateur experience. He's been in there with, you know, I me mean, different people, the Sean Porters. I think Edwin Rodriguez and different people like that as an amateur. Maybe Demetrius Andre. I'm not sure exactly everyone who is in this bracket, but the bottom line is he has a pedigree. He has a win that's very good over undefeated Peter Quillen. He beat Sergio Moore, then re-beat him just to prove it wasn't because of the injury. And he beat him worse and more systematically didn't get knocked down. And you see the heart on the guy. So, I mean, it is what it is. I talked to Jacobs when I was in Brooklyn for Broner versus Garcia. He said, save the date, October 14th. I will be back. And if it, I don't know who he's fighting. You know what I mean? It could be the great, a great name. But as of right now, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't the biggest name you know what i mean it is just whoever they can get to keep active and stuff like that because again i do agree he is the most avoided in the middleweight division because you can't say triple g is because jacobs fought him and he was the underdog massive underdog and people said jacobs was scared and his call out was full of shit and then he pushed golovkin to the brink whether you had golovkin winning or losing you can't say it's billy joe saunders because golovkin's been trying to fight him canelo said he was down to fight him you know what I mean? You can't say it's Triple G or Canelo because Canelo doesn't really even have an official fight at, at the regular 160. Plus, everybody wants to fight Canelo because he represents money too. You know what I mean? And they probably feel they can beat him. Jacobs, um, Chavez Jr. was willing to fight him. Jamal Charlo called out Triple G and Canelo. You know what I'm saying? David Lemieux says he wants Canelo, right? Freddie Roach saying they want a Cotto Canelo rematch. So you can't say he's most avoided. Same thing with Triple G. You have a welterweight who is willing to move up, even though he came up short in Kell Brook, 
was willing just the fact that he is willing to move up to fight Triple G. So, therefore, to me, you can't be the most avoided guy in the division because you wouldn't have people. Name a welterweight that wants to fight Daniel Jacobs. Exactly. Silence. You, you can't. There's no welterweight that I know of that, you know, I never heard Daniel uh, Danny Garcia say, hey, I'm going to move up two weight classes and fight Daniel Jacobs. It just wouldn't make sense. Danny versus Danny. You know what I mean? You don't see that, but somebody was willing to do that with Golovkin. Therefore, if you have guys two divisions below you that are willing to fight you, and you could say, oh, it's because Golovkin represents some more money than Jacobs, but that's the case in point. Jacobs is a good fighter, and you know how tough he is. You know he has heart. You know he has power. You know it would be a difficult fight, especially if you're two divisions underneath him. Plus, you might not get the payday that you got, you know what I mean, two, five million fighting him. Plus, you might get knocked out if you're two divisions lower. So, all around, it is what it is. So, I agree with Jacobs here. And um, October 14th looks like the date. We'll see who, who they land on and who he can fight. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video with Ego. Signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.